All right. Hello, everybody. This is Michael. I'm here with Uncle Asar, uh, Richard Davies, and Dr. Monse Santian here to introduce episode 306. How are y'all doing today? Great. I'm excited. Fantastic. Good. How about yourself? Ooh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm uh, getting over this. Uh, I injured uh, my vocal cords a, a couple, no, not two months ago, maybe like six weeks ago at this point. And I'm still like a little bit hoarse, but um, oui. by the end of the day, anyway, I'm still, fine. but, I'm, that, but otherwise that, I'm good. I'm good. And is that like I, a Shetland pony? You what? A little horse? Is that a Shetland pony? A... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I think I, I can't remember if we've said this on on the show or not before, but Richard and Monsa, y'all uh, got engaged. How? When was the yeah. engagement? Yeah. yeah, early June. June. No, late twenty seventh. Yeah, June twenty seventh. May have to look at pictures to tell you exactly when, but it's right around there. <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah, it was oh, right when she got back into town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Came back from Mexico to visit for a bit. Yeah. Right the next day. He proposed, yeah, which I was day. not expecting. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I had to plan out a good engagement because I had a few ideas. I was like, oh, you know, I'll pick her up from the airport and I'll engage there. And every single one of my sisters, all five of them were like, that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. There's going to be people honking, like people running past you. You don't know anyone there. And I was like, well, OK, let's think of a better idea. Um, so we met on campus at the University of Texas. And she was there to do a research project and I was there because I worked on campus before, you know, the world shut down. Mm -hmm. Um, And we met playing uh, Pokemon Go. We were both in a little group that toured around campus on Wednesdays. And so we had a spot where we met on campus and I told her that I needed to go down there to move uh, to a new office. You know, I made up something. And I believe uh, and she was too tired to like question it. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll do that in the morning, whatever. All right. Just, uh, I'll go to bed now. Yeah. So I drove her down there, uh, walked her to the spot, which she recognized it. She's like, oh, this is the spot where we met. And I was like, oh, yeah. You said that <laughs> Very in the casual about it. What? what was that? Oh, I said you said that in the moment of like, oh, uh, this is fun. Yeah. 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 She she recognized it. She was like, oh, this is where our group used to meet up. And I was like, yeah, why don't you, you know, check Pokemon Go, see if there's any. Uh, Pokemon here. You know, see if there's anything going on. And that was my distraction. So she would turn the other way and I could get the ring out of my backpack and I dropped out on one knee and, you know, did the whole thing. And thankfully she said yes. And of course. here we are. Yay. Oh, man, that's so exciting. That's yes, really we're very fantastic. excited. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's been, it's been really cool to just like get to know you guys throughout all the Jollyville project. I mean, I like Richard, you were one of the original, I mean, you were the original trumpet player mm-hmm. and then Monse I think I met you around our kind of infamous July 4th parade where like half of us were marching and half of us were in the, <laughs> the back of a pickup truck and right yeah the yeah. memories say we did amazing yep if you no. watch the videos yeah, you know though you might not say the same yeah thing. don't watch the videos um, <laughs> um but and then you guys have also been really big on the the editing side of things and it's I think it's it's one of those things that it's hugely important and often it's like I think the casual listener might not even realize like quite how much work um, goes into this. And yeah. yeah, so so maybe you could tell us a little bit about like kind of what kinds of things you try to do with the editing and how things have changed since, you know, episode one to where we are now. Right. Um, So I like to think of myself as the original editor, (laughs) the original, Uh, which please don't judge me for the first couple of episodes because I was also new in that process. Uh, Don't judge any of us. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Please don't. We've gotten better. And (laughs) I think it's been a process that has been very fun. At least for me personally, it's always something that brings me joy because I think that the project itself was created with the purpose of bringing a little bit of happiness to people that were being stuck at home and, you know, dealing with the whole not seeing friends as often or not going to work or not even going outside. Um, So we created this project out of the imagination of our writers and out of the kindness of the people that said, you know what, I want to make a voice here or there, support the project. I think it's a very fun 
interactive ex experience because we also pay a lot of attention to what people comment on our social media and, you know, they can email us and there, you know, you guys, you can email us and then maybe something will pop up in the future episodes. Just saying. Um, so it's been an honor for me personally to be part of the editing team. And because we got so many people interested in the project, there were a lot of voice actors, there were more skits. Eventually it became a job that I couldn't handle by myself uh, that well. And what I really liked was that the team got together and now we have a full team of editors and we coordinate and are better than ever organizing how we're gonna do the editing for skit. So really the joint uh, collaboration is a process that I personally enjoy a lot. Before it was just me dealing with audio files, but now that I get to interact or, you know, say here's skit one and wait for someone to put it together or this time it's my turn to put it together. I think that makes it more interactive and more fun. And definitely I think the quality of our editing has been going better and better because we also get better instructions now and we have an idea or a vibe of who we are. I think before we were trying to find ourselves, but now we have established somewhat of a pattern or things that we want to keep it, you know, jolly or radio quality. We have now like a vibe, a right. thing, an identity. And I'm really proud of that. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think for me, a big part of it is trying to match the style that Monty set. Uh, Cause she edited, you know, the first six, seven, eight episodes all by herself. And then I would kind of be behind her back, like watching and trying to learn from her. Because um, if you remember, we had that Jollyville uh, Brass Quintet uh, pandemic video. We did Paper Planes. That yeah. was my first experience video editing <laughs> at all. And so Monsi, she took the reins there. You know, she showed me like, here's how to cut clips and here's how to, you know, make it not look terrible. <laughs> um, so she did all that and I kind of learned from her. And that's what I've tried to pick up. Um, like whenever she's, you know, too busy to do something, which, you know, happened Never know. sometime around the middle of the first season, she just got really busy with work. Mm -hmm. And so I, I tried to take some of the load off of her and, you know, I try and do like the same fades and the same kind of style and, uh, timing and which basically comes from our director, Michael, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, the one who gives us a, you know, the instructions of, hey, I want it to fade in. I want the music to come in this low and then go up. Like all those little details. Trust me, someone worked on that. And it can because Michael was like, this will sound good. And it mm -hmm. does. So, yeah, well, I appreciate <laughs> you putting up with me. Michael, I'm going to I'm going to steal this interview. I'm going to take this from you so you can't open the show. We're going to put this on Community Beat. This, these guys are incredible. <laughs> We have to have the whole community meeting instead of opening the show. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we will. Maybe we will. <laughs> That's right, Yay. Well, cool. Yeah. yeah. And and I it would be interesting too to get um to do one of these with um and throwing in uh, Jamie as well. Jamie started as a as an editor a few um a few months ago. Um yeah. mm -hmm. she's also been a, a really good part of the team, but um, I know yeah. you guys just did the the traveling from Mexico and all that, so I'm just excited to yeah. get you guys on here. And this episode features a lot of Paul Fredrickson, which yeah. is which is a uh, um, one of our Jollyville standards. Um, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. my start with Jollyville Radio. Just right. That's right. Yeah, and all the way from episode voice. one. Episode <laughs> one is where we're first introduced to, to Paul Fredrickson. So yeah, yeah, he's I a love character. Her. And Jamie has been a huge help. Yeah, um, she takes a lot of the load off of us. Right, it's it's really it's, made a difference. It's really nice having, having an that. editing team. Yeah, really mm -hmm. proud of how far it's come and how well organized it is now. We're even like using specific like websites and tools to organize like different tasks for people. Right, we're in a whole other level, people. Yeah, trust our, me. Our whole content level. folder where we have all like our sound effects and clips is just. It's impressive now because when we started, we had nothing. <laughs> right. we you know, we're finding our... like copyright free stuff online and we needed claps and <laughs> right. all that little stuff. Now we have our own library. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of clapping, I think Asar probably has a story that he's. Uh... I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to. And we're trying to add uh, sound effects to what was it? The well, you were you were hanging out with with me. You were over in my apartment, Asar. It was we were editing the um, the the radiothon skit, and we were at the part where Peggy Breaker gives like reads a poem, and there was supposed to be really pitiful audience or right. like applause. <laughs> and then and then Michael was looking for 
stuff online or something. I was like, can we just make it? And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we could. Oh, yeah. There's two of us here. We can, yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, awesome. so I still don't live that down, even though I'm the one who brought it up here. But uh, <laughs> well, cool. Well, I appreciate you guys coming and chatting. And yeah. uh, what do you say we listen to the episode? Yeah, Let's do it. Good to me. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello, this is Jimmy Piecrust, and it is a rainy day here in downtown Jollyville. Thanks for taking the time to listen to us here on Jollyville Radio today. We hope you have a nice warm beverage lined up as you settle in for our Thanksgiving special. We are presenting a very special edition of the Old Fashioned Cooking Show, followed by special messages from the cast and characters of Jollyville Radio and, of course, an inspiring interview on Community Beat. Oh, and breaking news, I am just now getting word that the local television station KJVM Jollyville Channel 5 is down. More information to come and another reason to stay tuned. Oh, that's weird. That phone usually doesn't ring during the intro. We normally don't get or take callers during our opening, but uh, sure, sure, why not? Uh, Hello, this is Jimmy Pycross with KJVR. You're on the air. Hello. Hi, this is KJVR. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm calling because the TV channel is out. Well, you've come to the right place. We are an audio-only format, perfect for when the TV is out. Yeah, but I want to watch TV. Hey, um, you sound familiar. Is this Anderson Millingsley, the former station intern? It's just Anderson. I didn't think you would recognize my voice. Oh, I remember it all right. Uh, Why did you call us? Don't you know that we have nothing to do with the TV? I don't know. Radio and TV is pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, That's really not. Okay, well, just let me know, I guess. Well, anyway, thanks for being tuned to KJVR Jollyville Radio. Stick around. We'll be right back. Shapely, translucent, stunning, announcing the all-new line of luxury glassware by the designer Robert Cheerful. My name is Paul Fredrickson. I'm the DIY expert and handyman you can trust. In this season of Thanks and Gratitude, we here at Jollyville Radio would like to share what we are thankful for. For example, I'm thankful for those who engage in the civic process of voting, whether they vote for me for mayor or not. Let's hear from some of the other residents of Jollyville about what they are most thankful for. To Chipperton Automotive, I just want to say thanks to Randy for helping me find the right vehicle back in March when cars were so hard to find. He knows I need a lot of interior space to hold me and my six corgis, so he took the time to find just the right one. Hats off to you, Randy. Sincerely, Chippy G. This is Miss Kitty Westlake. To all of our sponsors and patrons, your support not only makes Jollyville Radio dance a little jig every time you toss a coin and preferably several more into our ragged cap. You, and I mean you out there, why you make it possible for our ever growing multitude of listeners to laugh. You inspire our writers to sharpen their wits and ah, dust off their funny bones. But most of all, you inspire children, big ones and little ones, to envision an endless world of collaboration and camaraderie, punditry and pranks, jests and jollies, and 
and the value of making friends with a banger semi-fictional radio team. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I'd like to thank my seventh grade English teacher for his crucial assistance with my interpersonal skills. I don't know how he knew that constantly calling me derogatory names and belittling me in front of the class was just what I needed to learn how to toughen up, but it sure worked. Now when people hurl insults at me, it just rolls right off my back. Thanks, Mr. Fraser from Stan. How lovely to give and receive thanks. We'll be back throughout the episode with more gratitudes like these. Sincerely. Paul Fredrickson. Why, hello, listeners. You're tuned into the old fashioned cooking show for our Thanksgiving special. I know you all love Miss Kitty's beautiful voice, but despite all my petitioning, the station says I'm not allowed to host this show all by myself and that I'm supposed to play nice, whatever that is, (laughs) with today's sponsor. I mean, our special guest, Pat Mayor. Hello, hello, everybody. I look forward to seeing you at my newly opened kitchen store, Saffron and Salamanders. Oh, and just what is a kitchen store? It's a specialty shop for all your culinary needs, from special equipment to exotic ingredients. (laughs) Oh, my, my, my. Special equipment and exotic ingredients are nice to you, but all that gadgetry is no my for old-fashioned know-how. And it is just so nice to meet you too, Kitty. Now, we'll start our Thanksgiving by making the sides, a simple but delicious jellied lime salad, and my favorite, mashed potatoes. That sounds delicious. And for the main dish, this old bird will prove that she can keep up with the young chicks. Why, we're gonna deep fry a turkey, a modern approach that gives such a juicy, crispy result, it just can't be beat. And what about your vegetarian listeners? What? What? Uh, what? What? I just happen to have a tofurkey with me, which cooks wonderfully in the deep fryer. Even some meat eaters will tell you this vegetarian turkey substitute is better than the real thing. <laughs> better than the real thing? Oh, bless your heart. I just don't think so. Not at all. There we go. I'm so glad we get to play nice by sharing new ideas. Oh, well, well, I suppose we can make an exception all in the name of playing nice. Playing nice. Well, now, why don't we rub this this thing with some salt and rosemary and let those seasonings soak into it. Okay, that should do the trick in just a few minutes. All right. Now, while that's resting, let's move on to the jelly salad. (sighs) This recipe is spectacularly simple, but super delicious. It's just a whack of peas and a hunk of cheddar cheese cubes. You whip these all into an unset jello team, pour it into a mold, cover it, and chill until firmly set. Oh no. Did you know that gelatin contains animal byproducts? I think you should be providing a meatless alternative as well. <laughs> really, Pat? <laughs> Maybe we just need to be a little more selective in whom we invite to these soirees. <laughs> I thought you said you were keeping up with the young chicks. I happen to have some agar agar with me, which is a wonderful seaweed-based alternative to gelatin. Oh, heavens to Chauncey seaweed! We simply can't have our salad taste like 
same way. The ingredient is flavorless, and we can just add lime juice to give it the flavor. It's a win-win. Well, now, unless you really must insist. I do. I insist. Well, then, why don't you put that seaweed gelatine salad in the refrigerator while I start on the mashed taters? Gladly. (sighs) Thank you. Moving on. <clears throat> One of the keys to perfect mashed potatoes is getting them boiled just right. Check them as you go with a fork to make sure they're tender. And when they're ready, immediately plunge them into cold water to stop the cooking. And goodness, Pat, you are making me so nervous to just keep leaning over my shoulder like that. Now, here's a hot tip, kitty. I mash my potatoes with a ricer, which has much smaller holes than an old-fashioned masher. Why don't you try the electric ricer I brought along? Well, well, that's not really keeping with old-fashioned, now is it, Pat? You'll never want to do those by hand again, Kitty. Just load all those potatoes into the hopper here and put your catch bowl here. See? Well, well, that may be just fine and dandy, but I'm mashing these taters by hand. Now come over here and make yourself useful by holding this bowl. As you wish. Come on now, hold it steady. You got it slopping around. Hold on to it. Hold on to it, it, man. I have it. Oops. (laughs) <laughs> I slipped. Oh my God, in heavens, there's potato everywhere! <laughs> I guess you should have used the ricer. Ricer? I got my eye on you, Pat. Well, at least our jiggly gelatin salad should be ready. Well, you better get it from the fridge because I'm not turning my back on you. Oh, kitty, you're so silly. Here, why don't you teach me how to take it out of the mold? You you won't? I'd love to learn from you. Oh, well, that's okay. This part makes most cooks nervous. But I, Kitty Westlake, I have a special technique. Now, you take a serving plate and you flip it on top of the mold. Then you take a towel or dishcloth and you soak it in the hottest water you can stand. Okay, got it. Now, put that towel over the mold just to soften the gelatine and wrap the edges round as far as you can. Hold it there for a few seconds. Now, holding, holding everything tightly together, flip the whole thing. When you remove the mold, it will be firm and in one beautiful, breathtaking piece. That's it? Yes, yes, that's it. Flip it now. One, two, three. Me? Well, you're the head chef de cuisine. Oh, oh, an oozing slime! That's what you call a substitute for gelatine? Gee, golly, Kitty, I'm very sorry. This must be making it very hard for you to play nice. I wouldn't (gasps) want you to lose your show. It's okay, Pat. We still... We still have this wonderful tofurkey. Ooh, kitty, even with the dry turkey, it's risky to put your arm over the fryer vat like that. Oh, oh, now, Pat, Pat, dear, I've done this dozens of times without incident. I'm a real pro, I'm sure. I'm sure we don't need just another one of your fancy, expensive gadgetings. 
thingamabobs or whatever it's called. Fortunately, I've brought along a remote-controlled electric food winch and tripod. Oh, my lord, that's just absurd. Look at how we are playing nicely. I'm done. I'm done playing nice. I am popping this sucker in the oil. Oh, my word. Oh, my goodness. Well, Pat, your so-called modern techniques... You've ruined every single dash on the show today. I hope you're happy with yourself. Oh, no. Well, for all the listeners out there who have now ruined their Thanksgiving dinner with us today, you can come and get one of our new Thanksgiving kits from my store, Saffron and Salamanders. (gasps) I'm beginning to think you're deliberately... I say deliberately trying to sabotage our dishes. Me? You were the one who spilled the potatoes, botched the gelatin unmolding, and dunked the tofurkey into oil over an open flame. Oh, that's it! This is the old-fashioned cook! Cookie, this is... I'm Kenny. I'm Kenny Wesley. Michael, I'm trying. I'm trying, Michael. I promise I'm trying. I'm really, really trying. You've been listening to... You've been listening to the old-fashioned cooking show on KJVO. Please tune in next time when we'll be sure to stick more closely to our old-fashioned roots. You rat! You did all this just to drum up business for yourself? Well, 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 you just wait and see how that works. When I spread the word of what you've done, I, I, I may be old fashioned, but I have a ton. I have hordes. I have multitudes of faithful followers in this neck of the woods. You just wait what happens to you and your soul. For KJVR in Jollyville, I'm Jimmy Piecrust. Folks, we realize, just as you do, that this television outage is coming close to eight hours and that all stations are not on the air yet. We genuinely appreciate that you're taking the time to listen to us instead, even if that wasn't what you had planned for your day. And now we'd like to... (sighs) Again. Oh, All right. KJVR, you're on the air with Jimmy Piecrust. Uh, hey, uh, this is Sherwood Barrington. I'm calling about the television outage. Ah, uh, yes, just a reminder that we are a radio station and have nothing to do with the TV. We will be providing breaking news coverage as we gather new information. Is that all? Actually, I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Oh, well, uh, we, we don't know either. We haven't gotten any updates yet, but we'll bring them to you as soon as we do. No, man, I'm not talking about the television that's been on static since 10 a.m. I'm talking about something else. Oh, uh, what is it? I opened my front door and felt this rush of something. There are leaves everywhere. I saw a squirrel carrying some small, hard brown stones with hats on them. I don't know what's going on. Well, Sherwood, what I believe is happening is that you are in nature. Perhaps you're outside where that happens. Maybe, but I'm still a bit worried. Well, uh, why are you worried? Are you in danger? Maybe. I don't normally spend time here. I'm not sure what to expect. I'm only a few steps outside of my front door, so if anything goes badly, I'll be safe. All right, well, I don't think you need me. I believe you'll be just fine. How about you call back in an hour if you run into any more issues? Sound good? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, you got this, Sherwood. I got this. And now, back to the show. Wow, that TV outage sure seems like it's causing problems. And thank you, Kitty Westlake, for all of the hard work that you put into making sure that we all have a delicious meal during Thanksgiving. Speaking of which, why don't we go around the table and hear from more residents of Jollyville about their letters of thanks. 
to Chauncey Applegate. Thank you for being such a wonderful and good-looking man. I appreciate all of your compliments and support. You truly are the best thing that ever happened to me. Forever yours, Chauncey Applegate. Well, this platitude goes out to my friend, Grumpy Sue. Thank you for always being ready to help out with those plumbing emergencies. Now I know the importance of owning a plunger if I'm going to keep eating those mega-loaded, double-throated, Big Papa's gnarly nachos from Betty's Food Shack tent. And ski you know I will. Love, Jensen Mutton. I'd like to thank my work colleagues for always taking me seriously and showing me utmost respect. It would have been so easy for them to ridicule me for that missing lasagna, but they didn't. I'm sure lucky to get to work with such a great bunch of thoughtful and caring individuals. Sincere thanks from Stan. Hearing these just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. Thank you for sharing some lube. And thank you, listeners, for, well, listening. Stay tuned for more Gladitudes right here on KJVR, Jollyville Radio. You're listening to KJVR. I'm Jimmy Piecrest. We wanted to provide you all with an update on the television outage. It appears that it is not just KJVM, Jollyville Channel 5, but in fact, all television channels. The cable company is saying that a line got clipped during routine maintenance and they should have it up and running again shortly. In the meantime, oh, okay, well, uh, we have another caller. You're on the air. Hello, this is Kitty Westlight. Oh, hi, Kitty. Welcome back. How are you? Well, I'm peeved. This TV outage falls right over an episode of the Brothers Burfield. Didn't they know last week that the one brother revealed that the tomatoes were not, in fact, poison and wasn't what killed their grandmother, even though her tape said otherwise and 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 was just about, well, it ended in a dramatic cliffhanger and now the episode isn't airing and I have to wait until it's streaming tomorrow. And in the meanwhile, I have to stay off social media until then because I just I just don't want to see any spoilers. And and you just know that social media is the way Miss Kitty stays connected to her friends. And well, well, I can't do any of that. Why can't you fix it? Oh, wow! I, I I'm really sorry to hear how upset you are, Kitty. It, As you know, KJVR Radio is not run through the same system as the television stations. There really isn't anything I can do about it. Well, Jimmy, dear, I don't give a flying thing. Figure it out anyway. I simply must have my show. Well, Kitty, I'll see what we can do about that. But while we're working on that, let's go now to Community Beat with Uncle Asar. This week, we'll be revisiting an interview from episode 208 with our friend Ginger Rosenthal. Take it away, Uncle Asar. Going live in 10, 9, ampersand, Octothorpe. That's uh, what they call the hashtag now. It used to be a pound sign. This is Jonneville Community Beat with Uncle Asar. Turn the spotlight on good people doing great work in the real world. Broadcasting from our Purple Street studio, a.k.a. a Zoom call, we have Ginger Rosenthal, founder of Blue Nebraska in Fremont, Nebraska, helping Nebraskans in times of struggle via the arts, nutrition, and education. Ginger Rosenthal, how are you? And welcome to Community Beat. I'm wonderful. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Ginger, uh, talk to us about your programming at Blue Nebraska. Well, in a nutshell, we were born out of the flood of 2019 in Nebraska. That was really big and devastating. We saw that there was a need for help above and beyond what state and government entities could do. So we tried to do a really big, fantastic fundraiser that got rained out. So then we tried to reschedule it. And then the people who were supposed to be the headliners pulled out. 
And at that point, we realized, okay, we need to keep this more grassroots, which ended up beautiful because you had people more intimately involved donating their money and their time to help give money back to some of the smaller communities or locals who still didn't have air conditioners or had walls torn out, no insulation, no windows, et cetera. Now the name Blue Nebraska, I know the Corn Huskers wear red. <laughs> <Correct. laughs> where, did the name, where did the name Blue Nebraska come from? I got stuck on this blue thing. The, my first business was the Blue Bottle Coffee House. That came about because I'm Polish. I named it after a Polish adventurer and spy from Vienna who opened a coffee house. Then when I went into yoga, it became the Blue Yoga Studio. So when we went into the nonprofit, Blue Nebraska made sense. When COVID hit and I actually got a break, I hadn't really taken a break for 18 years. I'd have a vacation for a couple of days or a day off. And this was like months. I realized I need to teach the way I want. And if they don't like it, then I guess I'm not supposed to be here. And that's kind of where the nonprofit came into play too, because when flood aid or when the flood hit, you just, you saw so many people caught up in the politics of it. And then you saw the rest of the nation not caring that Nebraska was, a lot of our area was underwater. So when that developed, it was kind of like yoga and that went hand in hand because they mm. could complement each other where they fell off. Ginger, has the local community been receptive towards yoga and uh, alternative ways of healing and things like that? You know, it's been intermittent and interesting. At some point, they have shunned it or not understood it or been a little nervous about it. But then on the other hand, whether it's been because of a doctor's recommendation, a friend's referral, or something they saw on TV or a sitcom, they've welcomed it and been able to see the benefits of clean eating, relaxing, moving the body in a way that's intentional. So it, it kind of goes back and forth, which can be trying at times, but also it's encouraging because you know you're growing. You see people evolve, you see the community change. Okay. Now you mentioned funding. Are you privately funded? Do you get any federal funds or do you, I mean, what does your staff look like? How do you pay them? Um, as far as the nonprofit, it's myself and two other board members. We basically volunteer our time. We apply for grants. We take donations to help pay for overhead. And then at the end of the year, if there's money left, we try to find someone who needs help and make a donation. Through COVID, we've been donating to different entities that have been struggling or trying to support music venues. We did quite a few live broadcasts of musicians from their backyards and then paid the musicians because they couldn't perform. So trying to do some different things like that. What, can you tell us about your presence on the web in case someone wants to make a monetary donation? And I think I may um, move to Nebraska. You have these backyard concerts going on. <laughs> yeah, just wait till after May. It's too <laughs> cold. <laughs> if they want to find us on the web, the best way is to find us on our website. That is embraceyourway.com. We're also on Facebook under the Blue Yoga Studio and Wellness Center or Blue Nebraska Foundation. We don't do a ton of social media. We're heavier on the website. We're working on developing a YouTube channel that would be under Blue Nebraska Foundation. Ginger Rosenthal, we appreciate you talking with us and we wish you the best of the best. Thank you so much. It was great speaking with you. This has been Jollyville Community Beat with Uncle Asar and Dig This. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Peace. Hi there, it's me again, Paul Fredrickson. Since we've moved outside of Jollyville, why don't we hear some gratitudes from the real cast and crew of Jollyville Radio? Hi, this is KY's Denty, and one of the things I am most grateful for in my youth is the scholastic book clubs in elementary school. It truly got me hooked on reading something I still crave as an adult, and a program I support to this day. To every librarian in the Buffalo Public Library System, thank you for never kicking me out. Though my endless questions and arcane requests 
My not so silent snickering when reading something that tickled me straight to the land of literary giggledom. And yes, my surreptitious snacking in the stacks, well, that all must have bugged the living daylights out of you. But most of all, for looking the other way when you just knew that I had checked out my book limit and was cribbing on a sibling's card, all while innocently claiming, why, I'm just getting this big pile here for my brother. So, hug that big bison out front for me. I know he misses my embrace, and winter is coming. This is Michelle speaking in her own voice. All of the people who work on Jollyville Radio in any capacity, I want to, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this project with me. For those of you who, who are listening and maybe haven't um, had a chance to be a part of, of the creation, even a 30-minute episode takes just hours and hours um, of human power to to create. And there's a wonderful team of, of really talented and fun people who... Um, do this just for fun, just just for funsies and um, just to put a little bit of joy out into the world. So thank you all so much for everything you do. Um, it really just means the world to me, and I and I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. Sincerely, Michael Crosa. Episodes 305 and 306 of Jollyville Radio feature the talents of Uncle Nassar Al Cablon, Emily Ansonet, Michael Crosa, Michelle Darcy, Jamie Davis, Richie Derry, Brian Green, Robert Leary, Thomas Schmidt, J.B. Skirlock, Michael Stanley, Matt Waite, and K.Y.'s Denton. Special appearance by Bob Don of the Hit Notes and Bob Short Story Hour podcast. Jollyville Radio is a member of the Pizza Rice Podcasting Collaborative. The recording was made in accordance with social distancing. Direction and music by Michael Croso with social media help from Emily Ansonek. Our talented editors are Jamie Davis, Richard Dayries, and Dr. Monse Santayan. Credits were read by the writers of episodes 305 and 306. They are Uncle Asar Alcabalan, Emily Ansonek, Michael Croza, Brian Green, and KY's Denti. We'll see you next time on Jollyville Radio. If you would like to support the financial success of Jollyville Radio, you can find us on Patreon.com. We have all kinds of goodies to say thank you to our sponsors, including letters from characters such as this one from Kitty Westlake. Kitty Westlake, letter of gratitude, part six of six. Oh my leash! We here at KJVR cannot possibly thank you enough and from deep in our hearts. And you, my precious sweet potato pie man, you are in the deepest of our hearts and in particular in my pounding and peter patting. Oh, pet. Let me take a breath. My cardiologist always counsels me to control myself whenever I think of you, but goodness, that is so hard. I'll continue. As our sponsor, you are right here in our hearts, soundly and securely, forever and ever. Or, as Spoopy, a simply superb scholar of the classics, would say, odd infinitum. Thank you again and again and again and again. Yours ever in admiration, adoration, veneration, worship, and just tingling all over. Your Miss Kitty, as in Kitty Westlake. To become a monthly patron of our show, just go to patreon.com slash jollyvilleradio.